uh, without further ado, um, welcome to Virtual Recruitment Strategies. Um, so uh, many of us uh, may be thinking that recruitment um, is going to be difficult uh, since we're not in person, uh, but today we're going to discuss strategies for meeting new people and building relationships that do not require um, actual face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, besides, I like to point out that we already do this all the time and don't even think about it, um, right? So I'm just like thinking of examples. So like modern dating has moved to apps like Tinder, job interviews for companies across the United States are done on Zoom. Um, so pre-COVID, this has already been kind of a normal thing that we have started to get used to in society. So uh, this is just an opportunity to kind of think about how we even do fraternity and fraternity recruitment uh, virtually. Um, and your generation of college students is probably more used to interacting on devices than you are in person, let's be honest. Um, so we can look at this in a really positive way um, as an innovative way to change how we do things moving forward even after the pandemic ends. I'm not saying I think you should move completely to virtual recruitment in the future, um, but you know, definitely doing some kind of hybrid in the future where you don't have to do everything in person, right? Um, so it's just something to think about. So I'm gonna pretty much go through different strategies um, and uh, you know, just provide lots of information about things that I've been thinking about. Um, and a lot of this actually I've borrowed from, from Fired Up Productions who, who does a lot of work around recruitment. So the first thing I wanna say is, right, we think about how we're gonna communicate with people. We wanna hit them up on social media. We wanna send them emails and stuff like that. The first thing I wanna mention is that spam is bad, right? Nobody likes spam. Um, you know, you probably get tired of me when I send you a lot of emails. I try not to do that. Um, you know, it becomes white noise and people don't want to get, you know, too much, too much information. Um, the tendencies of many fraternity sorority members will be to try the fastest, cheapest, and easiest method to get your name out there. Um, but you don't want to spam. So what you want to do, and it's something I always talk about, is really is just still focus on building relationships. Focus on trust building with individuals. Um, you know, and that's called kind of permission-based marketing. So once you, you're actually starting to build uh, relationships with people, then you provide them information, right? Um, focus on being as human as possible in this kind of virtual digital space. Anything that feels like a mass approach is gonna be the wrong approach, right? We're social organizations, we believe in building relationships, and it still needs to be that way when we're doing recruitment virtually. Uh, don't rush it. Um, you know, going from a stranger without a face, uh, you know, str uh, you know, face-to-face -face interaction, and saying like, "Have you ever thought about joining a fraternity or sorority?" Obviously, it's not going to be uh, the best way to approach the situation. So, you know, I do, I do want to challenge all of you when you think about recruitment. Right? We typically start with, um, you know, we we start with meeting people in class and already having interactions. Um, you know, in person, so it's a little bit different virtually, but we still want to move right in this order of kind of like here's a stranger, they become our acquaintance, maybe we befriend them a little bit. At that point, they become a prospect, maybe we want to recruit them, right? And then you, you know, close the deal uh, and give them a bid, right? Ask them to join, they uh, sign up to participate in intake process, right? It's important that you don't skip these steps, obviously, unless they want you to, and they're flat out like, I am interested in joining your fraternity, so tell me more about it. Um, you know, so again, this is about building relationships. Scale requires organization. If you're operating uh, virtually or digitally, you're probably operating at a larger scale than you're used to. More people, more points of contact, less big events, right? Or, or no, you know, no events, right, in person. Uh, you're really focusing on micro interactions where everyone is together all at once instead of a whole bunch of, you know, when you do those events, everyone's all together at once, you're not doing those micro interactions. But we wanna to move to micro interactions, right? More one-on-one -on -one conversations, two-on-one -on -one conversations, things like that. And that's gonna require you to be super organized, right? Have a good tracking mechanism. Um, I recommend Chapter Builder, which is actually, you can get a free version. Sometimes people just like to use an Excel spreadsheet. That's fine too. You can do that as well, just to keep track of the people that you're talking to, right? Keep track of every single interaction. That's kind of why I like Chapter Builder because it actually has that built in um, in terms of, you know, if you're using an Excel spreadsheet, you can kind of make a column for like, and put the date of, you know, Joe interacted with this guy, that, you know, on this date, and then we followed up with him on this date. You know, he came to this rush event, 
you know, keep track of all those interactions so you see who's really invested and who's been interacting with who. Um, again, that's a lot more work than some of us might have done in the past, but I actually think if you get in the habit of doing that kind of stuff uh, and, and really, um, really organize your recruitment process, you're going to find yourselves moving forward, um, having bigger recruitment classes than you have in the past, right? Um, with that level of organization. Uh, so we talk about this kind of formal takes on a new meaning. Uh, this virtual recruitment might be more formal than you're used to. Um, and again, when I say formal recruitment, I'm not talking about rounds and rules and process like, you know, panel and sorority recruitment. I'm talking about a more formalized process than just, here's our rush calendar. It's a bunch of hangouts, you know. Your conversations and interactions might look and feel more like interviews than hangouts because we're on Zoom, you might have a one-on-one, -on -one, but that's okay. Um, in fact, it might end up being a good thing, right? Uh, some of us might be awkward having a face-to-face one-on-one interaction with someone, but I'm sure you've already figured this out over the past six months. It's a lot easier to talk to people through a screen than in person. So here's where it actually might be a positive thing for you in terms of recruitment this semester, right, to think about. Um, because it's sometimes easier for us to talk via Zoom or FaceTime or, you know, than, than it would be in person. So let's use that to our advantage while we can. Um, there's good research to show that non-Greek students already know we're fun, right? So obviously we don't have to talk about how much of a good time joining fraternity or sorority is, right? I think they know that already and they can definitely tell in how excited we are and even talking to them about it. But what they don't know is, you know, about our, our you know, our history and our philanthropy and the things that we do on a daily basis, raising money for different organizations and the service projects and things like that. Um, might not be something in the past that you've talked a lot about, um, you know, for some of us, but this semester, I think when you're doing this kind of virtual recruitment process, I think it's a lot more important this time around, right? Uh, maybe more formal interactions will mean they have a higher expectation about what it means to be in a fraternity or sorority, and members will likely have longer, more meaningful in-depth conversations with prospective members than what could happen during an event, a presentation, or a round of recruitment, right? Um, so again, I look at this as an opportunity uh, for, for greater and more in-depth interaction with folks. And I think this is gonna be a positive thing. I actually think if we really put in the work that this can be one of the best recruitment periods that we've ever had in our chapters. So people, purpose over people, right? Um, I think, you know, I talk a lot about usually, um, you know, purpose and people being like the two main components of what it means to be an organization, right? In, or in order to have an organization, you have people, but in order for it to be an organization, you also need to have a purpose, right? So those are the two main components of like any organization, whether it be fraternity or sorority or club or political party or whatever. Um, in a, in a virtual recruitment environment, it is likely that uh, prospective members will make more head-based decisions than heart-based decisions, right? Um, what I mean by that, in other words, is they might not join because they like the members. Usually, that's why we join, right? 90% of our members, we, we'd ask, they like the people in the organization. But this time around, when we're doing this virtual process, it's going to look a little bit different. Right? They might join because they understand the value of the organization uh, well, and, and that the organization will have in their life and that they're inspired by the purpose, not just the people. Right? This is something where I think some of our culturally based organizations do a, a really great job of talking about purpose. Um, our panel and sororities do a pretty good job, especially around when they talk about philanthropy. Right? So, you know, I think too, when we think about Generation Z, um, which most of you are at this point, the students coming into college, um, you know, we're somewhat more transactional. We want to know what we're getting out of joining a fraternity or sorority, especially if we're going to drop $400 or $1,000 to join a Greek organization. Like, what am I really getting out of this? So yeah, I really like you as a person. The people are great. I know I have a lot of fun hanging out with you, but what am I really going to get out of spending this money every semester to be a part of your group, right? Um, I think it's important for us to think about that transactional aspect and really um, make sure that we 
ourselves understand our purpose and can articulate it well, right? So that when people hear our story, our elevator pitch, what we're talking about our fraternity sorority, that they can really buy in easily and understand what it is that we're selling, okay? So we don't necessarily think that it's bad that people this semester might not be joining for the people, more so the purpose. You'll become friends with people along the way. I'm not saying I want you to recruit people that you don't like or you know, um, you're not friends with, but I think this, again, this is just a different, different time period. You know, we, we're used to making friends with people by hanging out with them in person, but really we can't do that right now. So it's really going to have to be that, that purpose and the meaning behind organizations really going to help build our, our, our recruitment class, build our organization moving forward. Um, so really having them fully understand the value of membership up front is going to be so much more important now than it ever has been before. Right. So something we really need to think about. Reprioritizing, right? Obviously, we've been reprioritizing everything in our lives over the past six months. So it's going to be no different when we think about recruitment. Um, so in the past, uh, parity, fairness, rules, structure might have been priorities when we think about recruitment. Um, they were obviously priorities for a reason, but we might need to change in this new environment. So social capital, showing off, uh, flex and swag, large group gatherings, house tours, events, presentations, right? These are things that might have been priorities of the past. Uh, they made sense then, but, but they might need to change in this new environment, right? Decide what is truly most important to you today and make a list of your own principles as individuals and as organizations and build a plan based on that, right? I always talk about what it is that we want to sell about our organization, what it is we want to get out of our organization and how we use that to recruit folks, right? And then build a recruitment plan around that. Um, you know, it's easier said than done, but I think now is the time period where we really need to make that a focus. Again, what is the purpose of our organization? What am I going to get out of it? Um, how is this going to help me 20 years from now? Right? I think that lifelong membership aspect is more important now than it ever has been before. You're going to get it wrong. Okay. Um, we're all going to get wrong. At first, we might be trying new things because we're trying to recruit virtually. So some things might not work. That's fine. You know, this is something that we're just going to have to learn as we go. We're adjusting, inventing on the fly. Um, it's important not to aim for perfection, right? Aim for compassion and care. What I mean by that, again, is this is about building relationships. If you're truly trying to meet people, get to know them, build those relationships, learn what their goals are, what they want to get out of college and what they want to get out of the student experience, right? If you really get to that level, right, you're going to do a better job at recruitment than focusing solely on we need to get more people to join our chapter, right? Um, this is the time to be as personable as possible because that's what our organizations are really about. And I think sometimes we get away from that. Um, so focus on those potential recruits fully and execute the best of your ability in a way that aligns with your values and makes you feel like you're being good human beings. Empower small groups. This is something I, I should have put an asterisk here, I think is extremely, extremely important. Um, uh, you know, but this might be also a difficult one for some groups. So we're used to a very inclusive, holistic, democratic approach to recruitment for some of our groups. Most of the time, most chapters want all their members to participate so that all members can meet all prospects and then everyone votes on everyone, right? Um, that might sound like your organization. Some of you might not, but for a lot of us, that might be how it works. What I'm going to tell you is that, you know, um, that might not be the best way to do it this semester, okay? Um, we have plenty of models of representative democracy around us to learn from, right? Think about the United States. Uh, you, you, do you think that, uh, you know, when Congress wants to pass a bill, they, they put it to vote with, you know, the millions and millions of people across the country? No, it's a representative government. So we rely on our politicians to get things done. That's a whole other story. I want to get into that. But again, just as an example of representative government, you know, if we have a recruitment team, you know, that we trust and rely on to bring in the best members of our organization, then maybe those are the people that are really the ones focused on having most of the interactions and setting up these meetings and things like that. So we know how to empower small groups of leaders with clear expectations of how to make decisions on behalf of the larger whole. 
trust and transparency will be the secret sauce that makes this all work. And again, here I'm talking about larger organizations. Some of our chapters might only have two, three, four, five people. So this might not apply to you. But again, it's, it's important to think about how we kind of work as an organization. Some of us have 100 members in our chapter. I don't know if having 100 members of your chapter uh, doing virtual recruitment is, is really helpful uh, right now. So um, something to think about. Oop. Skipping ahead. Uh, don't forget the basics. So just because it is uh, this virtual recruitment doesn't mean core philosophies don't hold true. Your plan has to be dynamic, not static. Um, and there's a link there that I can give you some resources about what I mean by dynamic. But when I say dynamic recruitment, I'm talking about relationship building. I'm talking about really getting in detail um, down to uh, you know, really talking to people, what that looks like. How do we come up with an elevator pitch? If we can only interact with someone for you know, one minute before we move on and talk to another person, you know, how would we really um, gain their interest? you know, and, and getting them to think about it in, in a short period of time, right? So again, it's about being genuine and trying to build those relationships. Um, when I say static, it's, uh, you know, having the traditional kind of, this is what we're used to every semester. We have this rush week and this is what we, you know, we need to be a little bit more dynamic. So I have some resources that are linked there for you. Um, and you still have to be socially excellent. Again, these are concepts by Fired Up, but I love what Fired Up stands for, so that's why I'm sharing them with you. And socially excellent, again, is about building relationships. It's about shaking hands, which we can't do uh, in person right now, but you know, virtual uh, shaking of hands, building those relationships. And all the basics hold true. Values must lead. We will grow fraternity and sorority by demonstrating fraternity and sorority, whether that's online or in person. It doesn't matter. So this is still a relationship business. We know that. The methods of building those relationships might just need to be altered a little slightly. So I have some examples of things to think about. Um, the first example I'm going to give is specifically for cultural-based fraternal, fraternal organizations, so UCGC and PHC. Um, so something to think about. Imagine a UCGC chapter that starts by building a prospect list from three key pipelines. Um, Instagram follows, follow backs, direct messages to incoming current students, right? So really focusing on how you're using your social media. Um, we all know that on Facebook, especially, there's like the transfer Facebook group and the class of 2024. How much have we really used that in the past? I don't want you going on those things and then posting like flyers for your chapter and stuff like that, because I think that's how you get kicked out of those Facebook groups. You don't want to spam. Um, but, you know, if you see people posting, asking really good questions in those groups, like, why not reach out to a person directly and say, hey, you don't know me, but uh, I'm a junior at Stockton, I'm involved in X, Y, and Z, um, I thought that was a really good question, I'm a student leader, is there anything I can help you with? Build those relationships, right? That person might turn out to be really awesome, and they could be your future president one day, right? But again, this is about building relationships and reaching out to people. Um, a list acquisition from folks like admissions, EOF, Sankofa, Together, Spaces, right? Um, how are we doing list acquisition and referrals uh, from, from folks? Um, if you have an awesome professor that you really love, have you ever asked your professor, hey, is there someone you've seen in your classes that's really awesome that you, know, you think it was a student leader and I should talk to about joining my organization? Um, again, not something we might not think of doing in the past, but I think this is the perfect opportunity um, because it's also relationship building with your professors, right? Again, something to think about. Um, offering a small scholarship managed entirely through social media and texting for targeted, uh, targeting incoming students, right? So maybe you wanna do something where people get, uh, learn information about your organization and you're, you're giving like a, you know, a $25 gift card to the bookstore or Wawa or something like that, right? Um, conduct interviews for scholarships, of course. They also host three virtual informational meetings, right? Our informationals need, need to be on, on Zoom right now. Um, push out three simply and affordably made videos that feature your members talking about your values and purpose, what you're seeking and prospects, and answers to the most commonly asked questions. Like, what does your process look like? What if, what if I can't afford it? Do I have to be from a certain demographic? We can post all this information all we want on social media, on a website, or whatever, but I think you know, you've got your phone, uh, have one of your members, you know, record you talking, you know, like answering these questions and do like just short videos, like, so you're interested in 
um, in Sigma Gamma Rho. Let me talk to you a little bit about what a normal week looks like for our sisters, you know, um, or you're interested in Kappa Sigma. Let me talk to you about finances and what that looks like. Um, it becomes more personable, right? And personal. So if you post those online and you share those with people, um, they're more inclined to, to watch a video and listen, I think, than if you just posted all this information, you know, um, in, in writing and things like that. Um, you know, I think, yeah, I just watched a video of Kappa Sigma National Headquarters put out in terms of recruitment, and I thought it, they did a really good job of doing this kind of thing and answering questions. So I think that stuff's really cool. It's so easy for you to do. You just do it on your phone. Uh, so why not? or your, your, your camera on your laptop as you're watching this. Again, use the resources you have. Um, you know, each prospect goes through a series of group interviews and all final top prospects get a one-on-one -on -one interview with each executive board member. This is a lot of interviews and video calls, but it's worth it, right? So again, it's just, what are we doing to really put ourselves out there and reach out to people? Um, I think so much of the time we're used to people coming to us uh, we do things like meet the Greeks and hope people show up. And that's sometimes our first interactions with people. We're still going to do that stuff. And that stuff's great. But what are we doing to put ourselves out there as opposed to relying on these interested students on coming to us? Um, this one's really wordy. So I apologize. I'm not going to read it in full detail. Uh, but, you know, Panhellenic sorority example. Right, so kind of talking here about how, uh, you know, panel length sororities do, you know, use the concept of the bumping. Um, I kind of talk on here how you can do that uh, virtually um, and do some screen sharing stuff. And I know some of the technology that panel length sororities might use in terms of like my vote and how you uh, vote on, uh, on, on PNMs through that technology. Um, so there's some information about that on here. Again, we're still able to do a lot of the same stuff. We just have to shift in, in, in our mindset. So I'll share this after so you can read it in detail. IFC example, imagine the IFC council that creates an experience for PMs. and ms all right? Um, that starts in the spring and continues to the fall entirely vigil, uh, digital. So if you're watching this, you're part of the IFC chapter or IFC, uh, you know, the council. Um, this is something I'm really gonna push moving forward for everybody. But, you know, um, you know, with our eight IFC fraternities, I'd love to see this happen. You know, the council launches a major social media um, ad campaign, uh, does a scholarship for incoming gentlemen, as an example, right? Do some stuff with social media, Instagram, make some phone calls, you know, texting, actually works together as fraternity system, as opposed to on their own, does some IFC town halls, targeted stuff, um, and then conduct two weeks of online potential member orientation classes, some virtual fun events, video releases, live video presentations, right? Really makes a bigger deal about recruitment and about the IFC as kind of the core, right? Um, so as an example, I said on here, it kind of seems like the MBA draft, but how cool would that be if IFC recruitment was more like the MBA draft, right? People showed, you know, people showed up to all these videos and programs, we did all this stuff, and at the end of the day, we have this giant pool and it's more of us working together, knowing that we're all gonna get better and more prospects for our organization if we put our heads together and do something more like the MBA draft, right? Um, so again, I have some sources that I'm gonna share for you uh, that you can check out later, but I think some cool examples. So tactics and plans. Uh, this is not meant to be an all-inclusive or per perfect, perfect list of, of digital tactics and plans uh, for your plug and play usage, right? So I'm not telling you just to do, here's X, Y, and Z, just do X, Y, and Z and you're good. Um, but these are meant to demonstrate some, some possibilities of things that you can do. Um, it is so important to live in possibilities and solutions right now. Um, we can do this. Um, sure, there's obstacles, obviously, uh, to switching to virtual recruitment. But we're leadership organizations, so now it's time to lead and come up with new solutions to these new challenges that we presented, right? Um, I think that's a really important piece. Um, prospecting and pipelining. So I'm going to talk a little bit about inbound marketing. What does that mean? Um, how we use social media, list acquisition, referrals, and then more digital prospecting techniques. So um, this is something that I think the majority of the fraternity and sorority community does, and I'm going to try to teach you not to do it. And that is um, outbound marketing. So what I often see is outbound marketing, and it's about getting your name out there, right? And that's fine, right? You can put up all the stuff about your chapter and your organization, and that's great. Um, inbound marketing, though, is a direction that we really should be going in. 
Inbound marketing is about marketing efforts that result in getting people to share their name, their contact information, ideally more data about themselves and permission to continue contacting, right? So when we do things like meet the Greeks and the get involved fair and we're tabling and we do collect their information, that's more of an inbound marketing process. But how are we doing that in general when it comes to what we're doing on social media and stuff like that throughout the entire year? How are we encouraging people to give us their information, right? Other than those two opportunities each semester in person. Almost all of your prospecting efforts should be inbound marketing efforts. Chapters, councils, the entire community, um, should be quickly investing heavily in smart inbound marketing efforts to build your prospective members lists. So again, maybe it is giving out a $25 Wawa gift card um, by posting something online. Hey, if you're an unaffiliated man on, this, on the Stockton campus, you have registered for Fraternity and Strati Life, um, and you send us your information, we're gonna raffle off a $25 gift card. It's gonna randomly select it to go to one of you. Right, and you're collecting information from people who've registered, so they show you that they're actually interested. Uh, they're not in a fraternity yet, right? And it's just a way to get people's information. And maybe they have to come to at least one event, recruitment event, um, you know, virtually and participate in that. You're getting them in the door, right? And that's the important thing. Social media. So there are about a million ways to utilize social media to drive names onto your list, and they change every few months, it seems. But here are some basic ideas to consider to use social media for more than just showing off cool pictures of your member summer vacations. Yes, I will call you out on that. Yes, a lot of you have very pretty Instagram accounts. They're beautiful. Um, but how can we be using our social media accounts not to just show off our members and the fun times we're having all summer, right? Um, obviously, so... We, people are following us. We want to follow them back. If somebody follows us on Instagram, maybe we should DM them. Like, are we doing that already? Uh, follow incoming or current students from a chapter account. When they follow back, that is an invitation to send them a personal DM, making it clear that you're not a robot, right? Uh, to invite a conversation about your organization or just about regular stuff and, and add them to your list, right? Um, paid ads. Not all of us want to spend money, um, but it's relatively cheap to purchase advertisements on social media platforms, right? So something you can look into. Um, scouring for connections. There's nothing wrong with spending some time looking through individuals who have self-identified as incoming students next year. So again, I talked about those, the Facebook groups in particular. We don't want to be creepy, um, but you know, we should be smart enough to realize that, especially right now, because incoming students, freshmen, people who transferred here, are not able to interact with a lot of people in person, that more than ever, they are begging for connection right now. So um, use that to our advantage. Uh, you know, I don't mean in a way where it sounds like we're taking advantage of people, but like the fact that they are just really looking for connection, right? We can be that connection. So why aren't we reaching out to these students and saying, hey, welcome to Stockton, introduce yourself, start a conversation, and go from there, right? Seek referrals. I talked to you about that before. Um, talk to whoever you can about, you know, is there anyone that you think would be a great member of my organization? I'm just looking for names, right? That could be professors, that could be advisors, that could be whoever. And then comment. See a current or incoming student posting some strong content, let them know. Give them social media love in genuine ways so that they know they're being noticed. Invite further conversations in the comments, right? So again, it's just interacting with people. List acquisition. Um, a list of incoming students, a list of current students, a list of Eagle Scouts at your institution, a list of students from key feeder high schools with intentions of enrolling. Uh, last year's list of people who registered and didn't get a bid, a list of student organization leaders, right? This is how we should be acquiring lists of people that we could potentially reach out to, right? We want to use them responsibly and be as personal as possible with our outreach. I, the first thing I talked about was not spamming, but how much are we really putting in effort to really build a list of potential P&Ms before they even show interest, right? Is that something we've ever thought about before? Um, I think that's important. By the way, that's how Fortune 500 companies find people to work for their companies. You know, at some point in your life, you're probably going to get a message on LinkedIn from someone saying, hey, I saw your LinkedIn profile. I work for, you know, Citibank. Um, you, you know, it seems like you have some great experiences. Can we set up a time later to chat, right? That happens so much in the corporate world. That happens so much 
you know, it will happen in your career. Um, so it is a normal thing. We should be doing that at our level, right? It's smart. Referrals. Again, I talked about that before. Um, you know, I'm just seeking five incoming students that you think could be real change makers, right? Great examples of people, you know, give me five names, you know. Again, how can we get referrals from people? Um, more digital prospecting, prospecting tactics. Um, again, I, I share 60 tactics for meeting non-affiliated students. There are a lot of great examples here, again, from Fired Up. So I'll share these links with you. Um, interactions and experiences, again, um, I have the registration process for people interested in fraternity and sorority life. I can tell you right now, we already have about 30 people who registered this week uh, showing interest in fraternity and sorority life. Um, the number will continue to go up. Um, are we doing, you know, as councils, are we doing PNM orientations? Are we creating videos like I talked about? Are we actually texting and, and calling people and starting those conversations? Do a live presentation webinar, um, you know, um, one-on-one -on -one meetings, formal interviews, uh, what virtual fun events are you doing? You do brotherhood and sisterhood events. Could it be a recruitment event? Um, you know, pitch videos, application packets, do a Q&A, membership, how are you doing membership selection and bid and invitations, right? <coughs> um, registration. I will actually give you the list of those who register for, for, for fraternity and training life. I will tell you the most interesting thing about my role in recruitment is I don't think in my eight years at Stockton, anyone has ever asked me to see the list of students who registered for Fraternity and Sorority Life. Um, they registered, which gave me permission to have their information to show that fraternities and they're interested in Fraternity and Sorority Life. So if you ask me for all the men on that list, if you also ask me for all the women on that list, I will give you that list, right? I know after this meeting, I'm gonna have 20 of you ask me. That's fine. I want you to do that. We should be putting in that effort. Um, p and orientation, right? Potential member orientation. Um, you know, there's some cool stuff out there. Florida State does a really cool uh, virtual orientation. I think it's on their website. Um, each council does it, Greek council does it. Um, again, there's a lot, of, a lot of ways we can be doing things online, right? I talked about doing videos right here. I have some resources for that. Text and phone calls, um, we know a lot of stuff's gonna be done via text. We should be doing that. So here's a little bit of an example of how we do that, right? You know, Joe, this is Alex, my friend, you know, Mike connected with you on Instagram. We're trying to connect to incoming students to talk briefly about involvement on campus. I'd love to FaceTime or video call this week. This Thursday or Friday afternoon work, you know, work better for you, right? That last, that last line is really important, by the way. If you leave it open-ended, they might not respond. But if you directly ask them a question, they're more likely to respond. So, um, you know, to say, hey, this, are you free Thursday at 4.30? You are. You know, here's a Zoom link. Let's meet up. You know, so the more direct you are, the actually the better. Live presentations. Again, there's no reason why, especially if we have larger chapters, that we can't do something almost on a daily basis. Like from 7 to 8 o'clock every night for the next two weeks, we're going to have brothers that are on the Zoom line. Feel free to drop in and talk to us. Period. I mean, why can't we do that? It's so easy. You know, and that way you can have conversations and meet people and, and whatever. Um, so easy to do. So think about doing that kind of stuff. And then one-on-one -on -one meetings, right? So Maybe someone reaches out to you, you reach out to them, you do that one-on-one -on -one meeting, introduce yourself, see as an upperclassman if there's any way you can help them or, you know, whatever. But again, something to think about. And then formal interviews, you could also be doing, um, you know, virtually. I think that's important too. Um, virtual fun, I'm sure we all have done fun stuff on, you know, Zoom and, and uh, used, uh, you know, whatever I, I can't think right now of uh, what the companies are called, but all those, the, the virtual stuff you can do online and you can play like uh, apples to apples and other stuff with each other. Like, what are you guys doing to really get uh, interested students to interact with each other and you can have fun with them? Um, you know, doing pitch videos, um, doing a Q and A, especially with parents too. I don't know how many people thought about that, do a Q and A with parents. Um, and then, you know, how you can give out bids and do interviews and stuff online. I have resources for that. Okay. So, 
you know, that's really, that's really important. So I'm going to pull,